What's going on guys, it's your boy CJ from Black Royalty Gaming here to bring you yet another video and today I wanted to just show you guys the build that I'm going to make. There's a lot of different options available out there and I'm sure you guys have seen probably 20 million different videos of what people are going to make. So I'll just say this, if you are a pass first point guard or you like catching ankles, this is a pretty good build to use. It's the one I'm going to go with. It's going to start off with the playmaking pod chart, basically, right? Boom. I like the fact that it's going to give you the 95 speed and the 95 acceleration, still with a decent vertical. So we're going to go with the first physical profile right here. Now, as far as your potential attributes, I like this because this is going to give you the absolute most playmaking badges that I've seen so far. I've tried about, I don't know, 20 something different builds. This is going to give you 30 playmaking badges right here. Um, let's see here for shooting it should be about 11 or 12 let's see what I can come up with we'll do that for now slashing should be like another 11 or 12 let's go 12 for now um, perimeter defense definitely lateral quickness steals gotta get those up alright and let's do Let's see. So there's that. And then let's see if I can get 12 on this. Yes. Okay. And then for the rest, it's not gonna it's not gonna be enough to get you any more badges really. So I'm just gonna put the rest of it on interior defense just so I can have the defense. I don't really need the rebounding too much the way I'm gonna play, and I trust my center. So we're gonna move forward. Built uh, body shape really is just up to you. I'm gonna go with built because I'm not built and. Uh, I hate myself. So here we go. Um, the good thing about this build is going to be you can make him tall if you want to. So just so you see here, at six foot six, he'll still have at least 86 ball control. At six foot five, though, I think the attributes kind of make more sense because the driving dunk actually goes down, which doesn't make any sense when he's six foot six. Um, so that's that's cool with me. And his block, you see, it goes up 11, so it's almost 70 blocking. Uh, when you do that, so I'm gonna make them six five because that's about the sweet spot for what I found. And as far as the weight goes, I just want to see how big I can make him without losing any acceleration. So once you go up a pound, you actually go down to 94. So make sure you watch that if you see it on the right side of the screen. And then strength and stuff, I don't want to lose that either because he is still gonna be pretty effective inside. So right about here, it's really up to you. One of these three, you know, I'm gonna keep him at the 195. Now, the reason I like this build specifically is you can max out the wingspan and still get 86 ball control and still have 95 speed, which means you will be able to speed boost and you'll be able to play even better defense. So now you see his blocking and his steals go up above. Well, one is a 76, obviously, and the other one's a 73, but he still has 91 ball control. And his three-point shot is still in the 70s. So, I mean, to me, that's perfectly fine. I can make it work. He still has an 80 driving dunk right now, and his mid-range is a 76. So these are all things that I care about with 75 perimeter defense. Boom. So we're going to do this. I'm a pass first guard myself, so I'm going to go with the playmaking takeover just because I like how it breaks people down. So we're going to go ahead and build this. Now, this one here is going to get you similarities to Derrick Rose, John Wall, and Damian Lillard. That is some pretty decent company to have. All right? No biggie there. I'm actually doing this in real time, so I'm probably not going to edit this. It's all going to be just one big video. Now, this is the thing that I see a lot of people um, skipping over in their videos. When you set your overall rating for testing, we know that the absolute max you can get to every year is 99. But we also know that it fluctuates. So you may start off 99, and if you have a couple bad games, you drop down to 96, 97. You know, you're going to go up and down. What we do know is you can't go lower than a 95. So when I make my builds, I like to look at what they're going to play like at 95 because that's most realistically what you're going to be at. So if the max that you have for your overall cap is going to be 86 ball control, for example, that's 86 at 99. That's not 86 anywhere here. You're going to have to be all the way to a 99 and hold that 99 which means if you lose games and stuff you can go back down before you can speed boost before you can do any of those things this build here is actually pretty decent at 95 so if you want to take a look he still has long arms to make up for his steal rating and his block rating so he's still going to be able to contest you still get all these badge upgrades your perimeter defense is still a 75 
your ball handling is still at a 90, which is very important because you can automatically speed boost because your speed and acceleration are still at 93. Your three-point shot and your mid-range, your shooting basically is all the same. It's maxed out already. And your driving dunk, that's really the only thing that took a hit. You'll still be able to do layups and euros and all of that stuff. But basically, you know, your your inside game isn't completely gone. So it's a pretty good build, even at the base of what you can get it to. And as you go up, obviously, it just gets better and better. So, no biggie there. Now, as far as the badges, I always use Paul George's jump shot. I like his jump shot, by the way. For the badges, when it comes to slashing, for me as a point guard, I always put consistent finisher bronze, contact on goal, because you're in there with the big guys, fancy footwork, because I like to do advanced layouts and stuff, so that's going to be your euros and cradles and hop steps and all. I actually do that pretty well. So that's going to be on silver. Pro touch is reduced penalty. I mean, uh, it gives you a boost, my bad. Consistent is reduced penalty. And then I'll do acrobat on gold as well. And then I do giant slayer on silver. I know some of you guys say, why don't you do slithery finisher? Um, as of right this second, I, I'm cool. You know, I didn't want to lose either of acrobat or contact finisher, and I feel like I need giant slayer. Maybe if I had a couple more slashing badges, I would have done this. But for right now, this build has been working for me. It's been pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Shooting. Now, the shooting badges as a point guard are very interesting. Because when you're a guard, you don't typically catch the ball unless that's how your offense is set up. You're pretty much shooting off the dribble. right? It's not a whole lot of the ball coming back to you, at least when I play. Um, I come up the court, I either make my shot, go inside, or I pass out to somebody open so they can hit a three. So my catch and shoot, I only need it on bronze because in the rare event that I do get the ball back, one, my rating is high enough to where I'm sure I'll hit it pretty good, and this will just help me out with that. And two, corner specialist starts in the mid-range this year, if you didn't know that. If you're on the side of the rim uh, towards the corner, like even in the mid-range area, it kicks in. So this will just help you hit those more consistently as well as from the three-point line. Flexible release. Just in case I miss time my jump shot for whatever reason, it is gold. Difficult shots to help me with uh, shooting off the dribble if I do manage to get that little in-between space and somebody's running a zone on me. And quick draw because this is when I normally release it. Um, and I just got range extender bronze. I mean, I really didn't need this one. You can put it on uh, dead eye or whatever you want. I don't really shoot from far back. I'm pretty much usually close to the line when I shoot. But I did it just in case. It's like, you know, shot clock winding down. I got to pull it. Why not? Right? Doesn't hurt anything. Now, this is the bread and butter. You get 30 available upgrades for your playmaking, which is amazing. So you're going to get some Hall of Fames here. I always do Hall of Fame ankle breaker. Quick first step is going to be a big deal, honestly. We'll do a gold space creator because you're going to be quick. You should be able to create space either way. Tight handles helps you break down a defender. So those three, ankle breaker, quick first step, and tight handles really go together to me. I'm going to do... A gold stop and go, because it's going to help you explode off the ball after you pick it up. I mean, not pick it up, but you know, once you stop with the ball, do hezzies, that kind of thing. Needle threader, I think, is going to be pretty big this year. Floor general is going to give an attribute boost to everybody on offense. So you're going to need that. To me, that's actually more important than dimer. But I will go ahead and at least do a silver dimer. And now that I still have three left... I may actually just go ahead. Oh, my bad. Unpluckable, duh. Unpluckable is going to be really big. Um, even though I have high ball control, I don't want to take chances of people making like lockdowns and stuff. I'm not really worried about handles for days because I'm going to kind of get to the rim guy. I'm not like a dribble guy, although I know how to dribble. I don't think there's going to be too many situations where I'm going to be dribbling the air out the ball this year. But if I have to, I can. I'm just I'm not going to do that. If I can help it, I'm just trying to get everybody else open and then get my shot last if I'm the last resort, which is fine. Another notable badge, downhill is pretty cool. I'm just banking that I won't need it because my speed is so high. I should be able to beat a lot of people up the court either way, but that's something to keep in mind. Lob City Passer is another one, but if you're, rel if you're relatively close to the rim, it'll still work. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And bailout, I don't pass out a shot anyway. That's just a low percentage pass to me, so I don't really do that. Now for your defense, you only have six, so you got to make them count. And you're looking at all these different things up here. 
There's so many of them. Tyler's Defender is not a bad choice if I had like eight or ten or whatever. A rim Protector, I doubt I'm going to be blocking people at the rim. That's the center's job. If I can just hold them long enough for the center to step over and help me out, that'd be cool. Interceptor is cool, but I have long arms, so that kind of helps with this. So I don't need this too much. The two important ones to me are Perimeter Defense, which is going to be Clamps, and Shot Contest, which is going to be Intimidator. You gold out these two, and you know you use your attributes, you'll be just fine on defense. There's nothing wrong with this. And guys, this is the exact build that I'm going to make. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check this build out. You guys are more than welcome to play with it. Um, I just wanted to show you guys real quick before the game actually drops. This is the one I ended up going with. I did like the, the two-way three-point facilitator, but just the fact that this guy with the maxed out wingspan and everything at six foot five is going to be a monster on defense and offense and still going to provide like a, a lot of good plays. He's going to be breaking ankles with super long arms. That's crazy. So, yeah, try it out. Tell me what you think in the comment section if you guys do end up trying it out. But like I said, this was your boy CJ from Black Royalty Gaming, and I'm at...